Well, 2021 might have been the year for mergers and acquisitions, driven by a post-COVID bump and easy money from the Fed, but higher rates, market volatility are here. The question naturally has the buying frenzy run its course. Joining us now from the Milken Conference in Beverly Hills is Tyler Dixon, City Global Co-Head of Banking, Capital Markets and Advisory. Tyler, great to have you on the program. I wanted to ask you just kind of first of all, uh, what is the story for global M&A? You, you know that there's six trillion dollars of volume. How does that compare to what we've seen historically? Well, 2021, as you identified, Brian, was a record year, just given the backdrop being so favorable towards activity levels. Uh, now that record level, it, it did hit that $6 trillion value. When we look at 2022, we've got a different environment, and therefore we have different activity levels. M&A continues to drive investment banking activity around the world, so it is the lead product. Volumes are down. So we would look at year to date last year, we're off about 25%. It's important to put it in context. This is still a very heavy deal oriented market. When we compare this activity level 2022 to date, it looks quite good versus 2020, which was a more normal M&A year this time. So down about 25%, Tyler, you know, if we can break it, break it down by sector, we have seen some big um, announcements deal making in tech whether that's a Microsoft and an Activision, obviously I'm not going to ask you, Tyler, to weigh in on Elon Musk and Twitter, but we have seen a, a re-rating, valuations drop significantly in tech names, and I wonder if you think that that makes for some ripe targets in this space. Uh, we, we think the M&A market's driven by growth. And so when you look at the activity levels, not surprisingly, tech is at the top of the list. We also see opportunity in healthcare, financial technology, clean energy technology, just a few examples of where we see activity levels. And that's natural. That's not only a result of valuations changing, but really the mega trends that are going to dynamically make growth in the future for earnings and valuations of companies go up. But Tyler, how about the regulatory story? That could act as a kind of a counteracting weight as well. Obviously through 2021, that hasn't appeared to weigh down on companies, but with Gary Gensler and just the FTC uh, under the Biden administration suggesting they really want to take closer look at larger deals, is that going to give some companies pause when it comes to possible transactions? Uh, the companies we advise always take into consideration regulatory concerns and antitrust. I do think we're in a window where there's greater focus on that in the current environment than there were in recent years. We would expect that to continue, not only when we look at the U.S. market, but when we look at the world on a, on a global basis. Uh, and I think that is shaping the mindset of, of boards and CEOs that we talk to, and we're helping them think through those activities carefully. Uh, who are the buyers here? We know that private equity has been, you know, flush with cash. They can do a lot of these types of transactions. Are they the buyers in many cases, or is it just public companies eating up other public companies in space? Brian, we're seeing it through both dimensions. We have companies uh, at the corporate uh, level that have record levels of cash and are looking at this market uh, dynamic where values have come down as a buying opportunity. So we see corporate confidence being quite high in the M&A market. At the same time, that's complemented by record levels of cash in financial sponsors in private equity investors' hands. And that private capital dimension uh, competing with corporate capital we think creates a pretty robust environment for activity levels. Probably not at last year's records for the reasons we've identified and we have to take into consideration the economic backdrop and market backdrop, but we see a robust pipeline for M&A as we look out across 2022 and beyond. You know, and when we talk about mergers and acquisitions, we also have to talk about debt and with rising interest rates, concerns about what that means for some of these large structured finance deals. You highlight in your report that uh, leveraged buyout deal volume is up 10%. I mean. Is that a trend that you expect to basically full stop with the Fed now raising interest rates? Uh, how is that going to impact that side specifically of this story? Clearly financing packages are influenced by the economic backdrop. We have seen the, the market slow down a bit just given the war in Ukraine, uh, concerns about interest rates uh, and inflation. Uh, but we are still continuing to see good financing packages that are well structured in support of uh, appropriate M&A activity. We're seeing that both on the corporate side and then the financial sponsor side. We do think the cost of financing is naturally going up in this environment uh, and we're taking that into consideration as we look at activity levels. All right, Tyler Dixon, City Global Co-Head of Banking, Capital Markets and Advisory, live from Beverly Hills at the Milken Institute. Thanks so much for joining us, appreciate it.